On the script, we had this synthetic called Rook. Rook was always going to be a torso in the movie. We knew it was a way of fleshing out the computer and mother in a way. We got the guys from Legacy to build a real animatronic. It was going to be in the table that could interact with the characters, that could move, that could talk. Must complete the mission. Fetty felt very strongly from the beginning that we would use an animatronic puppet to be Rook because he's, he's completely damaged. There's only half of him. He's certainly had an interesting meeting with the Xenomorph. So then came the moment to decide how this Rook's going to look like. And we thought, well, it's going to be a robot. It can look like anybody. In the world of Alien, you've seen some likeness being repeated many times. So we thought, like, Ian Holm will be the perfect Rook. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Science Officer Rook, and I humbly request your services now. Obviously, Ian Holm had passed away a couple of years ago, so I started just a conversation with his widow and his family and his kids. Thank God they loved the idea, and Ridley loved the idea, who was really close to Ian, and everybody signed off on this adventure while trying to bring him back. In 1979, he was maybe 43 years old, and there are no molds of him that exist. So you can't scan him and do molds like we would do today to make exact replicas. So the challenge was, how do you recreate someone from a moment in time that has to be so iconic and so spot on? We found a live cast of Ian Holm from 99 that he had done for The Lord of the Rings when he was playing Bilbo. From that head cast of Ian Holm is that we started building the animatronic to make sure the likeness was uncanny. It took a lot of R&D. Finally, we landed on the plan that we can have it be at least 95% successful for shots, but you have to take it the next extra step for certain shots to do some CGI work in the eyes and the mouth to bring it even further along. So we started with a puppet that uh, Legacy built, uh, an animatronic puppet that was fantastic. But we have to augment it to really bring it to life. That's where a bit of a CG comes in and some fine compositing and some machine learning to help make him be that Ian Holm lookalike again. Every monster, I think, you know, when it's a shark on Jaws or you name it, it always taps into a primal fear that people don't even know yeah. there. There yeah. is something that people are terrified of specifically mm. that that creature happens to represent. Did you ever like thought hard about it? Why, why did that, why did it work so well? I'm gonna hand this to Dan O'Bannon because I was saying the script and dynamics are fantastic. It really is seven people getting out of a little tin can in space. And yeah, they're getting out because you've got to have a beast. The beast had better be great, otherwise you've got a bad horror film. And O'Bannon was showing me the book Necronomicon by Giga. He said, they don't want him. They think it's obscene. I said, obscene's good. So from that, I flicked to the book, and there he was. I said, this is it. I've never been so sure in all my life that this is it. I just kept doing that. So they said, OK, will Giga do it? I said, well, let's fly him in. Giga would not fly. But I had to fly to Switzerland, and I found him living on a kind of pebble dash state housing inside was his universe. I went in there to find a very mild, lovely man, and I convinced him, you must do the movie, you must do the movie.